The following structure is created in the ABC company for convenience. Two groups, servers and workstations in the managed computers node. Two subgroups, desktops and laptops are additionally created within the workstations group. The Quick Start Wizard creates a default policy in the Managed Computers group. It applies to all computers within the group and is inherited by all child groups. It can be difficult to achieve optimal balance between protection, performance, and usability for all computers in the company within one policy. Even in small networks, it is often useful or even necessary to configure different protection settings for servers and workstations. And in large networks where different groups of users use different special programs, different policies with different exclusions are extremely important. For the ABC company, we will create different policies for servers and workstations. To create a policy within a group, you can use a wizard which helps you create and configure a policy in a step-by-step -step manner. But it's often easier to copy an existing policy and make the necessary changes to it. When you make a copy of a policy, the copy is always inactive and retains the name of the original. It's a good idea to give each policy a descriptive name reflecting its purpose. You would also activate the copied policy because an inactive policy is not applied to the computers. Similarly, let us create a policy for the workstations group. The policy is named Office Policy, as it will be applied to the computers of all employees while they are located in the office. you should also delete the original policy. An active policy in the parent group restricts configuration of the child group's policies. It is usually a more sensible approach to have an active policy in each subgroup and avoid active policies in the parent groups. This way, all policies are independent and can be configured without restrictions. Having active policies in both the parent and the child group can be beneficial in a company with different administrators responsible for different groups. If this is the case, the head administrator can use the parent group policy to define what the child group administrator can or cannot change in the child group policy. In the ABC company, there is just one administrator and they have no reason to restrict themselves. Since the settings of the default policy better fit workstations and do not actually meet the server's needs, let us change the policy of the server's group. Usually, servers must have higher reliability and performance. That is why some protection components can be switched into a resource saving mode. For example, 
you can disable the heuristics analysis in the file antivirus component to avoid performance decrease. By default, the end users can neither start nor stop group tasks. However, this behavior can be undesirable for servers. Usually, it is the administrator who works on a server and a running group task might hamper their work. To enable the administrator to manage group scan and update tasks, you should adjust the policy settings so as to allow managing group tasks. To make sure that the policy is enforced, open the File Antivirus Settings in the local interface. That's it. Heuristic analysis is disabled for the file antivirus. In addition to the policy, the Quick Start Wizard creates group tasks for the Managed Computers group. Virus Scan scans critical areas of the system each Friday at 1900. Find Vulnerabilities and Application Updates performs vulnerability scanning on the protected computers each Thursday at 1900. Install Update updates Kaspersky Endpoint Security from the Kaspersky Security Center and is scheduled to start when new updates are downloaded to the repository. Similarly to the policies, tasks should also be different for workstations and servers. For example, virus scanning should be performed at night or during the weekend on a server, and databases can be updated less frequently than on workstations. Conversely, Virus or vulnerability scan tasks should be run on workstations on weekdays because computers are most likely to be off during the weekends. You can use the Task Creation Wizard to create all the necessary tasks on the subgroup level, but as with the policies, it is often easier to make copies of the existing tasks and modify the copies. We will use the existing tasks to create virus and vulnerability scan tasks with logical settings for each group. First, let's create a group virus scan task for the servers group. The task should be renamed so that the name explains its purpose. Task schedule is extremely important for servers. The default task starts each Friday at 1900. Servers usually perform resource consuming operations and work 24-7. That is why this task should be scheduled to a weekend night, for example, Saturday at 0200 hours a.m. Another important setting for a virus scan task is the scan scope. Scanning performed at night does not hamper the users, and server importance is usually considerably higher than that of a workstation. That is why it might be worthwhile to scan all hard drives on the servers.
The default objects can be deleted from the scan scope because the system area will be scanned anyway during the system drive scan. Scanning startup objects is important because this is the only way to detect root kits on the computer. Let us create a similar task for the workstations group. Here, you can leave the default settings and change only the schedule. The task will start each Friday, but at 1300 instead of 1900 hours. It is lunchtime, and chances are that the client computers will be on and free. Scan of critical areas does not take much time, and if a problem arises, the administrator can solve it that day instead of postponing it to the next week. Now, let us create group find vulnerabilities and application updates tasks the same way. First, create a task for the servers group. Again, let us mention in the task name that it is intended for servers. Considering how critical servers usually are, vulnerability scanning is recommended to be performed daily by night instead of weekly. Let us proceed to the workstations group. In the properties of the group, Vulnerability Scan Task for Workstations, schedule it to start after the group Virus Scan task completes. It is more logical for the administrator than running these tasks on different days.
as with the policies, you should avoid having identical tasks in the parent group and in the child group. Parent group's task doesn't restrict configuration of child group's tasks, but presents a different issue. On the computers in the child group, both the parent group task and the child group task will run doing the same thing and consuming twice as many resources as necessary. If you create customized tasks in the child groups, you don't need another task with similar settings in the parent group. This doesn't apply to the tasks which have different purposes. It is okay to have daily scan tasks with customized settings in the child groups and also have an emergency scan task in the parent group intended for manual launch. In the ABC company, we are configuring regular scans and we don't need the tasks in the managed computer group. The last task we haven't discussed yet is update. For the workstations group, we can leave the existing update parameters without changes. They meet all the requirements for updating antivirus databases on the client computers. However, this is not the case with the servers group. Application module updates often require restarting the operating system, which in the case of the servers is not always desired. In many organizations, each server restart must be planned. That is why for servers it is logical to split the update task into two separate tasks, one that will update the antivirus databases and the other one will update the modules. The former will run regularly and automatically, while the latter will be started manually by the administrator. In the settings of the antivirus database update task, select the Install Only Approved Updates radio button. Leave the default schedule, which is to start after the databases are downloaded in the Administration Server repository. Now that all the necessary group update tasks are created, you can delete the default update task. If there are two update tasks scheduled on the computer, only one will run and the other will fail with a description that you can't run two update tasks at the same time. This kind of failure doesn't tell you about any real problems. It only reminds you that your update configuration is suboptimal. All the more reason to avoid having the same task both in the child group and in the parent group.